This is an all-too-brief remembrance of Mother, as told by her four children, Gwen, Chris, Ed, and Nick. We four spent several days together in reminiscence just after her passing, and continued our discussion in the following weeks by email. This is an attempt to preserve some of those memories for her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. We are telling this story through pictures taken by many of an incredible person during her 93 years. Frida's story begins with her birth on July 10, 1920, in New York, Ukraine, Russia. Our family were among the many German middle-class people encouraged to settle in Russia by various Tsars and Tsarinas in an attempt to modernize Russia. However, after the Communist Revolution, our family, who were entrepreneurs and Mennonites with deep religious convictions, were forced to flee their adopted homeland. These pictures show the family homes where our grandparents grew up, one of the flour mills established by our great-grandfather, as well as the unusual for its time co-ed high school he co-founded. In addition, there are some of the few pictures of Peter and Anna, our grandparents, during their early years in Russia. To the left is the passport photo of Peter Unger, in keeping with the norm of the times, was separate from the rest of the family. Of the family passport photo, Mom told me this is Mother Anna Unger and her five children sitting for what she called the passport of our life. It allowed them to escape from the terrorism of the gangs who would be the forerunners of the Red Army. Mary, the oldest, is on the far left. She is holding Hilda in her lap. She told Frida, Mom, I took Hilda on my lap for something to hold on to. Otherwise, she could not sit still. She rocked back and forth uncontrollably at that time. This lack of control of her motor nerves and muscles was called fight dance or St. Vitus dance. It had plagued her for some time. She had to feel Gazan, said Grandpa Unger. He explained that Mary had seen too much of gang violence. Helen and Peter are standing behind everyone. We were all squished into a small area for this photo, said Mom. So I ended up on Mother's lap, even though she was pregnant with our sister Anne and had little room to spare. Mom grew up in Coldale, Alberta, which is where they settled after they got through with that horrendous journey from Russia. She put together a photo album of her early years in Canada. Mom told me that she uh, had spent a lot of uh, good times with the friends in these pictures. There was a whole group of uh, young people her age that just enjoyed going on outings together. They would meet at Grandpa and Grandma Unger's and just have uh, Sunday nights, freshmen's, and games, and Mom really enjoyed that. Mom and Dad, Jacob Nickel, were married on October 29th, 1941, in the church in Coldale, Alberta. They spent the first years together in the Canadian Rockies where Dad served as a chaplain to the CCC camps for conscientious objectors performing alternate service during World War II. Dad really loved it up there. He loved the mountains. And he took lots of pictures, but they don't really have a lot to do with him and Mom. They were mostly pictures of the guys at camp. Their first daughter, Gwen, was born in 1943. Followed three years later by yours truly, Chris. Uh, we went to Paraguay in 1948 to help resettle the European War refugees after uh, World War II. There were 11 villages in the Chaco where these people did their best just to survive, having left Europe and now coming into a jungle area of Paraguay. Dad was busy trying to obtain uh, necessary equipment and 
tools to help them build and farm, uh, you know, things like that, equipment like tractors. While he was doing that, Mom did what she did best, make people comfortable. And, of course, her thing was feeding people. Then after we left Paraguay, we went back to British Columbia in Canada in late 1950. And shortly after that, uh, their son Edgar was born in 1951. About a year later, they moved to Hillsboro, Kansas, where their youngest son, Nick, was born in 1953. And a couple of years later, Dad was accepted to graduate school at Isla School of Theology in Denver. Several years later, when Mom's youngest child, Nick, started school, Mom continued her education at Bethel College in Newton, where Dad had a teaching post while working on his dissertation. Frida attained her baccalaureate degree in education, graduating with honors from Bethel College on the same day that her oldest child graduated from the Newton High School, not long after Dad got his Ph.D., in 1962, we spent another year back in Canada, which began with two months camping, hiking, and mountain climbing in the Canadian Rockies, more specifically the National Park of Banff, Yoho, and Jasper. And Mom stoically <laughs> endured this two months of camping with good grace, and never ever did she complain, but that doesn't mean we didn't. Uh, there were things like a song that uh, Gwen and I made up one time on one hike too many. So to the song of I've been working on the railroad, if you see a body rolling down the mountainside, you will know it's mine, honey, I just lost my stride. We did move to Shellbrook, Saskatchewan, uh, where Dad had a ministry uh, for a year in a very small town while we were waiting to return to the U.S. After spending a year in Canada, we then moved to Shreveport, Louisiana, where Dad had a teaching post with Centenary College. While we were in Shreveport, Mom was able to use her new teaching degree as a substitute teacher in the high school there. So I get the pleasure now of talking from the time from the 70s to present. When we first moved to Wichita, we had a house on Everett Street, and it just ate at Dad's craw to have to pay so much money for interest for a house. And so that inspired him to use his frugal and industrious capabilities. I don't know if there was a child labor law back then, but I do know that uh, as children, we labored. We built a house on Gordon Street. Something happened. that It was one of these friends that I met in high school connected me with this Dave McClenahan kind of guy. For whatever reason, the McClenahan factor uh, kicked into gear not only did we have a best friend for life out of it, we ended up getting uh, two brothers-in-law. Go figure how that all works out. We moved to the Custer House, what I'm now going to call Camp Grandma and Grandpa, where all the cousins would meet. You guys grew up on beer hogs. One of the things that Mom had done during the early 70s was to complete her master's degree. For mom and dad, education was so important. It was just a major part of their life. She was continuing to teach both German and English at Wichita High School North. Kind of a neat fun fact is uh, her most famous student, Barry Sanders, went on to become a running back for the Detroit Lions. Then in 82, when mom and dad went down to South America back to visit where they had been put, when they uh, pulled into the train station there, they were met by a large crowd of kids and grandkids that all knew of mom and dad and all was so appreciative of what they had done for them. And then later as he passed from cancer of the pancreas, and that was a surprise. Dad, while he was in the hospital there, three times he told me the story of one of the professor's three daughters when we want to build this cabin. Dave and I went out and picked the materials out at Star Lumber. He and I were being a little bit picky. We told the, uh, the workers there, oh, we're going to build a cabin for our dad. And that's when they jumped in. And they were the ones who flipping board after board, and they got beautiful wood. And then as we were building it in the house on Custer Street, it was almost like this cathartic effect for everybody. But that's how we all worked through that period of time. 
See, I came back in 1997 to visit Mom, and here I found Mom on a roof. And I thought, oh, man, she left it clean in the gutters. Mom, get down from there. A few calls around to the other brother and sisters. It was time to probably move, uh, kind of change into a different phase. 97, uh, moved up to Mount Ridge. She was close to Uncle Dick and Aunt Mary Rempel and also an Ozzie and Elaine Daring. And so all these friends that she had known forever, uh, they were right there with her, so it was just a natural fit. In 2010, Mom had her 90th birthday, which she shared with Phoebe. People came from north, south, east, and west. Again, the McClenahan family and the Nickel family to get together. And then 2013 comes, Mom gets sick. And even in her illness, she still connecting family and friends. Another gift of mom, always bringing the family together. Her, her love, her compassion, her sharing uh, came through in all phases of her life. You know, what more can we say as family and friends? Thank you, mom, for all that you have done. I know, and that nice, my descendants are going to see how grumpy I can be.